Hey guys, it is Mike from Baltimore Rides here. Tuesday, October 24th. It's about 2.20 in the afternoon, um, as you can tell because it's daytime. And I don't usually make videos during the day. But um, I wanted to make a video for you guys real quick. Couple things. I did not make it to the 180 days of change Uber meeting this morning. My daughter has been complaining about her foot for the past week or so. Um, She's a dancer, she does ballet, jazz, tap, all that stuff. And uh, we thought it might have been a significant issue or, you know, just because of the amount of time that she, she grumbled about it. Um, you know, usually if it's just a strain, she kind of gets over it in a day or two. So yesterday we, um, we took her to the doctor and the doctor referred her to a orthopedist. So this morning that's where, um, that's where we were. She, um, it's just a muscle tear. It's not life, life or death or anything like that, but she's got one of those plastic boots on her foot for about a week or so. And so she's going to be kind of sidelined from all her activities for a week or so. But, um, you know, that's more important than, uh, this 180 day change thing. And honestly, as I expected, they loaded it right up on the screen for all of us right after the meeting was done. So by one, two o'clock, it was already on the screen. I've got myself a little note card here because I just don't want to forget anything. But um, I do want to talk about it because I think it's very, very profound. This, this one may not seem like a lot to you guys, but this one might be pretty significant. Now, when I say significant, I don't mean it's going gonna, it's gonna to be financially game-changing for us in terms of how much money we bring home. However, it's a significant sea change or um, sea change is like a, a, a tidal change. Damn, bird just pooped on my window. Oh my God. Um, it's a significant kind of change in the approach of how we drive our fee structures to our customers, the passengers. You know, traditionally, time and distance is kind of taxi land. You know, that's kind of the pricing that the taxi industry has used forever. And we've really just adopted that. Um, although we streamlined it technologically, we adopted the same model. So with some of the changes that we're seeing now, which I don't know if they're live today or if they'll be live in the next coming days, um, you're starting to see a break from that. So let me go over them real quick. So the easy one is wait time fee has gone up. So for those of you that don't know or understand what I'm talking about, when you get to a passenger's house, uh, and this is not on pool rides, guys. This is on regular rides, X, XL, and black. When you get to a customer's house, you pull up, you know, you either confirm arrival or the thing automatically confirms arrival because your GPS is so close. Um, it starts the countdown. First two minutes are free. So they have two minutes to get in the car that doesn't cost them anything. But after that countdown goes to zero on the two minute countdown, you'll notice it shifts to green from blue. And then what that means is for every second you're waiting, it's actually paying you a little bit of money. Now, it used to be like three cents a minute. It wasn't even, or eight cents a minute, I think is what it was most recently. So that's not very significant because eight cents a minute, which is, has been our traditional time rate of pay, is not a lot of money. You know, you can wait three minutes and what have you done? You've gotten 24 cents. Yeah. So now, based on the screenshot they provided, and I don't know if this is the same rates for all markets, 25 cents a minute for those three minutes we're waiting makes it a little bit more worth your while. Um, and I, I have a, a story behind this, okay? Because this is actually important, guys. So a friend of mine um, from kind of the, uh, the old days, the BWI days, um, actually had an activation issue where he got deactivated because he was canceling regular rides before the five minute countdown. And that may not seem like a big deal. Like it happens once in a while. That's why we have a cancellation rate, but it shouldn't happen regularly. You know, if you get to a customer's house, the, the contract that we have and that the customer has says we're going to wait for five minutes. 
After five minutes, we can leave and we can charge them a no-show fee. So for us to leave before the five minute mark, you, that's something you don't want to do unless it's a really significant issue. Um, I've done it a couple times when I thought I was in a sketch neighborhood and I didn't really like the layout. Um, I was a little bit, little bit fishy in neighborhood. I've done it a couple times when I really had to use the restroom. And, you know, just it, it comes up once in a blue moon, but it's not something you should do regularly. So to raise this to 25 cents a minute means in those city moments or those customers that are just dilly-dallying, they're taking forever to get ready, um, you're potentially tanking on 75 cents to maybe even a dollar. You know, if you, if you text somebody at, at, right at the two-minute mark, or honestly, I text people right when I pull up. I just say, hey, this is Mike from Uber. I'm here. Or if I'm in an area that's crowded that I think there might be other Uber cars, I might say, hey, this is Mike from Uber. I'm the silver car with my hazard lights on, you know, parked by the intersection or whatever. Um, but if your, you know, your customer texts you back or calls you back and says, okay, we're on our way, um, and you say okay, then that's kind of a verbal commitment from, from you to wait for them to actually get their butts out of the house. And so this, this might put an extra dollar you know, in our pockets for every kind of drag-ass customer that we get. And I probably get a handful a night that are like that. You know, one, two, maybe even three every night that just want to milk it as long as they can before they come out that front door. So that's pretty significant. Okay, the next two things, uh, well, the next one is the actual cancellation fees themselves are being adjusted. Um, and I don't know what the numbers are on this yet, but they say they're, you know, to better reflect our time and inconvenience. So I don't know if that means they're going to correlate to time and mileage. I don't know if that means they're going to just be, you know, raised. I, I don't know. We're, um, you know, we're interested to see how that pans out, but cancellation fees aren't really a way to make a living. They're not, you know. Now, my rule of thumb with everybody is I give you the five minutes or two minutes for a pool, and then I bolt. I do it because from time is money to me, and my car needs to be moving to make money. If I'm sitting waiting for someone, especially someone that potentially is not going to show up, then I'm losing money. So, because I'm not getting miles, and miles is really where I make my money. So, cancellation fee going up is kind of like a consolation prize. You know, yeah, you didn't win Jeopardy, but this is what you get. Um, you know, that they're raising it a little bit reflects the fact that probably they realize that cancellations themselves are going up. Uh, more and more customers are either double dipping and they're using Lyft and Uber and whoever gets their first wins um, and then they don't do anything about the other one so we end up having to no-show it or just people are spazzing out and they're just requesting rides that they're really not ready for. I don't know. But for whatever reason, I've noticed an uptick in cancellations lately. So this one will be helpful to us. The last thing I want to talk about is the really weird one. You're now going to be charging some of your long pickups a pickup fare, which we'll get the money on. And so I, I, I don't know what the mileage parameters are on that. I don't know if it's 10 minutes out or more. I don't know if it's 20 minutes out or more. I don't know if it's those people you have to drive across town to get. I just don't know. But it, potentially what it says is that if somebody's a far away from you and you go to pick them up, um, it's, they're going to compensate you for your time along the way to get them. So I, I don't know. The wording on this is pretty ambiguous. And, you know, maybe the people that were at the meeting would be able to shed some light on this. I don't know. But what it sounds to me is that they're actually giving us pickup fees. So we'll make some money off the customer just for the act of driving to them. And I don't think it's going to be everybody. I don't think it's going to be the folks downtown where you're, you know, you're 0 0.2 miles away. I think it's going to be the ones where you're out in the suburbs and that person's, you know, two, three miles away from you. Um, you know, potentially seven to 10 miles away, to 10 minutes away, drive time. 
I, that seems realistic to me. That's what I imagine it will turn into. Um, I don't know. But I'm curious, guys, because that in and, of, in and of itself is a significant change. You know, taxi cab companies don't charge you to come and get you. The airport shuttle doesn't charge you to come and get you. They charge you for the total tra travel distance from your house to the airport. And I'm using that as an example. Or a cab from your house to wherever you're going. But they don't charge you a pickup fee. So for us to be acknowledging that you know, hey, on those people that we're driving out of our way, so probably suburbia, you know, the suburbs, you know, I'm driving 10, 10 minutes, let's just say. It's a magic number. I don't know what the number is. But let's say it's 10 minutes out of my way to come and get you. Um, that's, a, that's a reasonable adjustment. You know, that's time that could be invested in a, in a closer passenger, but we're not. So... I'm curious about that one. I'm curious about that one. That one might be significant. For those of us that work the suburbs occasionally, like uh, like I do, and I think a lot of you guys do, Frederick, Silver Spring, Bethesda, you know, those areas out in the burbs, Ricerstown, Towson, um, you know, Owings Mills, you know, any of the uh, Annapolis, any of those suburban cust uh, drivers that end up repositioning themselves to get to a new passenger, you know, because they don't want to drive 10 minutes for their next pickup. That could be significant. That could be interesting. So I think, you know, this one was a change that was loaded with, you know, financial changes. And they may not seem like a lot, guys. They're probably not a lot in the course of one day or one trip. But where they'll start to add up is, you know, those of us out there doing 60 to 120 trips a week and I kind of give you that range you know that's like most part-timers to full-timers are doing 60 plus trips um, us us full-timers are doing probably a hundred plus trips a week so you know it's very significant for those of us doing that because out of those hundred plus trips what you don't see is how many cancellations were embedded in that and I would venture a guess it's probably 10 to 15 percent so it's probably 10 or 15 cancellations so you know we those are kinds of numbers that can add up over time um, and then the last thing I want to talk about guys while I'm here and I've got you during the daylight and my brain is a little bit more lucid is um, don't fall into the trap on social media okay here's the trap on social media and I do it too somebody posts um, a screenshot of their earnings for a day or for the week, okay? But what they don't reveal is how many hours they drove or what day they drove or, you know, what shifts they drove or how many miles they drove. They don't want to give out any of the, the kind of specifics. What kind of customers they were driving. So if somebody says they've driven, they made $300 on a Monday, but they won't tell you how many hours they drove. They won't tell you what kind of trips they were taking. Um, you know, one of two things. And you guys know I'm not, I'm not the best of the best. I'm not. But I know on average, you know, I work 10, 12-hour days. And I've never done a $300 Monday before. So for me to back into something like that, I can say, okay... His screenshot shows 12 trips, $300, whatever it may be. Um, you know, that's $20 a trip on average. Average, remember, we average that stuff out. There's no way to do that with city driving. There's no way to do that with suburban driving. So there's only a couple different ways somebody can make $20 a ride average. You're an Uber black driver, in which case why you're sharing your numbers with us is beyond ridiculous because our numbers aren't anywhere comparable to a black vehicle. Or you're an Uber XL driver. Um, and even then, those are big fares for Uber XL. Um, and probably you're an airport driver. Um, and you got lucky. You worked a really, really long day, I would venture. And you got lucky and you, you, know, you had a lot of long trips. So, you know, that's the tricky part about this, guys. And Reagan Airport in, in the middle of D.C. is not going to get you those long trips. So I would say you're either a Dulles or a BWI driver. Um who got lucky and did 12 trips in the course of probably a 16 to 18 hour day and 
you know, that's great numbers if you want to work those kind of hours, but I don't. Um, so just don't fall into the trap. You know, if somebody d p doesn't post the whole picture um, and they leave pieces of the jigsaw puzzle out, they're probably leaving them out intentionally. And they're either leaving them out intentionally to puff their chest and make themselves look more successful than they are, or they're leaving them out because there's something amiss. Something's not right. And, you know, that's the trick that we all get into. We all chase the dollar. We do it every day. We do it when we turn the app on. We do it when we're waiting for our next trip or we're trying to get to our certain goal. But this is a self-driven business. The only person you're competing against is yourself. The only goals you're competing against are yours. Don't fall into this trap of saying, oh, well, Johnny Rocket did 300 on a Monday, so I'm gonna do 300 on a Monday. If you don't have a business plan to do 300 on a Monday, or the means to do 300 on a Monday, and you can't even really guess as to what those things are until you can backpedal and kind of dissect somebody else's results, then you're chasing a ghost. You really are. You're chasing a ghost. You know, instead, you know, do what a lot of us here have been doing um, in and around my YouTube channel or the people that text me and ask me questions. You know, you just say, look, you know, this is what I think I can make on a Monday. What do you think? And then we bounce ideas off each other. You know, people come up with better, better strategies than I do sometimes. Sometimes people drive different hours than I drive and reach success. So, you know, but base it on fact. Base it on this is what I think I can do. This is where I'm going to drive. This is how many hours I'm going to drive. Um, and this is the result I think I'm going to get. And then let's talk about the results afterwards. So don't fall into the keeping up with the Joneses trap of, Oh, so-and-so had a really big day and I didn't, so now I feel like shit. Pardon my language. Because uh, I think a lot of that is fake news, to coin uh, a modern term. I think a lot of that is people posting mysterious information up that doesn't really correlate. Um, and if you're a black driver, just so you guys know, and I don't know their actual rates per mile or anything like that, but I think it's significant. I think it's like 4 or $5 a mile for a black vehicle. You know, you're, you're driving a Mercedes, you're driving a, a Chevy Suburban or an Escalade or, you know, a high, a high end vehicle that's going to have a higher upkeep than our regular cars. Uh, and so part of the fees are based around that. Part of the fees are also based around the presentation, this customer service, you know, those guys are expected to wear nice clothes, you know, slacks, dress shirt, whatever. A lot of them do anyway. Um, or if you're a woman, you know, dress nice. You know, that's a vehicle, it's kind of a luxury experience. It's almost like a limousine service. Um, you know, it's a luxury vehicle service. So for them to, you know, charge somebody four or five dollars a mile, and I'm sure their per minute fee is higher as well, now all of a sudden a $20 trip doesn't seem that unrealistic. You know, that could be three and a half miles, four miles. So um, XL people, you know, theirs is basically double what ours is. So an XL driver gets like two, two and a half per mile for that minivan. Again, you know, gas guzzling vehicle carrying multiple passengers or large amounts of luggage. So there's an expectation there that, you know, that vehicle is, is providing a service that's not the same as what we can provide. And where you don't want to fall into that trap, guys, this is a long video, but I'm wrapping it up. Um, where you don't want to fall into that trap is you don't want to have somebody that's an, you know, an X or lift whatever the basic lift, you know, ride is, squeeze six or seven people into your little, you know, your little four-door car just because they want to cheap out. You don't. You know, you can't differentiate between a black customer and a regular customer. I mean, obviously, I've had some pretty snazzy people in my car um, that just got Uber X's. That's fine. Um, I think people are becoming more frugal. But when they start shoving six, seven people in your car because they're too cheap to pay for the minivan or the, you know, the fleet vehicle, the big vehicle, that's when you have to say no. You got to say, you know, one per seatbelt. Um, and then they have to pay the right amount of money because that XL driver is the, really the one that should have gotten that fare. And, it's, and you're not going to get paid the right amount of money for what you did anyway. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Um, Lots of interesting stuff. We're going to keep our eyes on this. I'm curious to see 
kind of what these fees look like when we start seeing them. I will definitely be looking at my cancellations tonight to see if they've changed. Um, and if I do get any of those kind of long trip rides, I will definitely be looking at that to see if um, there's a pickup fare added to that. So if I see anything, then I'll mention it tonight. Um, otherwise, the last slide on the, on the app said something about coming in December. So we might not see this stuff until uh, later. Maybe they announced it nationally, but our market might not see it for a little while. So coming soon to a theater near us. We'll just have to put it like that. And when we start seeing it, we'll start seeing it. Um, everybody have a great day. Good luck today. And, uh, and I will see you guys on the road later. Bye.